Okay, so here we have, right, the full heart circuit, so the systemic circuit down here as blood passes from the left ventricle through the body into the right atrium, then the right ventricle kind of going back to the lungs to get reoxygenated, returning to the left atrium, and completing the pulmonary circuit. What we're going to focus on right now is going to be here on the systemic circuit. So, right, I think I mentioned earlier that the, uh, that the first artery that gets hit here is the aorta. And then the aorta kind of eventually branches out, gets to the body, gas exchange occurs. We go up to the right atrium, and this stuff kind of gets dumped in via vena cava, the inferior and superior vena cava. So what we'll focus on is everything in between here. So we're looking at all the vessels that kind of get touched by blood on their way to the body and sort of their structure and their function in general. All right, so here I've got a little schematic and... Uh, Here's the labels. Okay, so right, we're starting with the aorta, and if this were, you know, if this were the the body, this would be coming from the left ventricle, dumping into the aorta. The aorta branches out into arteries that continue to take that blood throughout the body. Those arteries branch out into arterioles. And the arterioles eventually become capillaries. Capillaries, right off the bat, is going to be where gas exchange occurs. So here, gas exchange. So if this were since we're talking about the systemic circuit in particular, right, this is going to be where oxygen leaves the blood and goes to the cells that need it, and then carbon dioxide leave those cells and enter the blood there. So now we have deoxygenated blood, and deoxygenated blood is going to travel through venules. Then it, those are going to merge into bigger veins, and those veins are going to merge into even bigger vena cava. And those two vena cava are going to dump right back into the right atrium so that they can begin the pulmonary circuit and get reoxygenized. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice here is sort of uh, is is right that these these arteries kind of get narrow as they go. So even though the diameter decreases, it turns out that the total surface area actually increases as you go from the aorta to capillaries. Uh, you could look at it as term, terms of like like you know what has more total area, one really really big vis vessel or like thousands and thousands of these smaller vessels, and the answer is these ones right the there's so many of these that they overcome their small diameter and these can get really small um, I've heard or I've read in, in some books that these get even as small as one cell thick to maximize gas exchange but there's so many of them that the surface area is ridiculously huge so humongous surface area um, as it turns out the surface area actually increases here so the surface area starts to get really high in the arterioles and maximizes in the capillaries. There's two things that that does in particular. So if we're going to talk about increased surface area alone, the first one is that it lowers blood velocity. This is very you know, convenient, right? If I have a capillary and blood's moving through it and things are trying to pass in and out, I don't want the blood racing through there. I want it to slow down to increase the time that there is for exchanges to occur. So remember that gases are being exchanged and you could say that there is some fluid exchange going on as well. So sometimes water will be coming out or plasma will be leaving the capillaries or coming in depending on, on the needs of the body. The second thing that this big surface area does is it decreases or significantly decreases blood pressure. Uh, all right, so we'll talk about blood pressure next. Let's turn this off. Uh, let's keep here. I'll erase this. Okay, so talking about blood pressure next. Uh, as we go through, right, so then, okay, in general, blood pressure is going to drop the further you get away from the heart or from the left ventricle, since the left ventricle is the guy that's contracting really hard to establish a blood pressure. So we could say that the arterial system, in general, is really high in blood pressure. And as you get to the capillaries, again, this surface area drops the blood pressure. And then the blood pressure gets even lower as in the veins. So the blood pressure is going to sort of slowly decrease from here significant drop and then slowly decrease even more so the answer to the question which blood vessel has the lowest blood pressure is going to be the vena cava if we're going to talk about blood velocity the lowest blood velocity is going to be in the capillaries because they have the highest surface area so remember those two facts they get tested quite often okay one of the things about uh, about this blood pressure gradient right is it creates sort of a high pressure arterial system and a low pressure venous system and the structure of these reflects that 
So in general, you could say that the arteries are going to be more elastic. And that elasticity allows them to sort of, uh, I guess, uh, distend and respond to times when the blood pressure is high and then kind of like relax and contract as the blood pressure fluctuates with the beating of your heart. They're also going to have more smooth muscle. If we're going to talk about veins in general, we can say that they're thinner. Now, veins are not going to be as thin as capillaries. They're the thinnest, obviously, because that's where the exchange takes place. But veins are going to be thinner. They're going to have less smooth muscle. And they're going to have valves. Okay, this is crazy important. Remember this part. So, okay, so blood moves through the arterial system via the blood pressure. That's why you have blood pressure. It's what forces blood to get where it needs to go in your body and provide your cells with all the stuff that it needs. The blood pressure drops here, and so you can no longer count on blood pressure to move the blood through your venous system. So the question is, well, how does it move? Well, it turns out that your, uh, your veins actually kind of, uh, or your muscles squeeze your veins. So when you contract a muscle, it kind of squeezes here on the veins and pushes the blood back towards the heart. Sometimes even just the movement of the arteries next to the veins can force this blood to move towards the heart. Uh, that's why when you're on an airplane, uh, the blood pools in your legs because you just sit there for like five, six hours and you're not moving. So the blood just kind of gets stuck in your veins. It isn't until you get up and walk around that you start contracting your muscles and forcing that blood back. These valves, which would be you know, dispersed throughout the veins, ensure that the blood only flows towards the heart. All valves prevent backflow. That's the job of a valve. And so this valve, so when these guys get squeezed, it makes sure that the blood can't go backwards. It can't go back towards the capillaries. It has to continue moving forward towards the heart. These valves are super important and you don't see valves in the arterial system because there's no need. The blood pressure kind of keeps this blood flowing in a continuous direction towards the capillaries. right? And since we're talking about the systemic systemic vasculature anyways, you could say that right, the arteries here are all going to be oxygenated. The veins are all going to be deoxygenated. Okay, Last thing I want to talk about, let's turn all of this off, is going to be the arterial system. So again, comes back to surface area. So there's super high surface area here, and it turns out that this surface area is so high that your body can't get blood to all of it at the same time, or it can't get lots of blood to all of it at the same time. So your body needs to determine <coughs> Uh, where it wants to send blood, what's at the highest priority level. If you think of any time when you've had like an adrenaline rush or like if you get in a car accident or something, the last thing you're thinking about is like, oh man, I'm really hungry right now. Or, you know, I have to go to the bathroom, whatever. It's like that stuff's not on your mind at all. And part of that is because your, your body isn't sending much blood to your digestive tract. It's kind of like that's not important when you're having an adrenaline rush. What's important is that your muscles get lots of blood and then you can kind of like run away or think really quickly or, you know, do stuff like that. So the organs that need it the most receive the most blood depending on what you're doing so blood needs to be your body needs to figure out a way to divert blood flow and it does so through the arterioles so your arterioles are famous for diverting blood flow and they do so with extra smooth muscle so they have extra smooth muscle than uh, than normal arteries and that helps them to sort of constrict which prevents blood from flowing into the capillaries after the constriction takes place, or dilate, and dilation increases blood flow. So constriction decreases blood flow, and dilation increases blood flow. All right, so hope that was helpful.